Hi, my name is Mark Bolly. I'm with Selling Insights. Uh, this is video cast two, uh, we're going to call it, uh, of our series to really explain and get to the simplicity and the solutions and the insights from big data and really get past a lot of the clutter and the, the names. And on our last webcast, we talked about the complexity, the process, the storage, uh, being able to search big data and in order to come up with the insights. So we, we hear these terms and we really get overwhelmed by a lot of the data that's out there and a lot of the really a lot of very, very big companies that are in this space selling software, selling data servers, selling infrastructure that will cost your company a, a large amount in CapEx, but really not focusing on the key parts, which in our opinion is sales and solutions, and really taking those ideas from the data in order to drive your business, and that's the number one goal. Um, what we're going to talk about today is really drill down a little bit further in what we've developed at Selling Insights based on lots of understanding in the industry of what we call the data ecosystem. And if you look here, if you haven't seen it before, we always keep a whiteboard to make it really <laughs> very simple, so it's pretty casual. And we also make these quick because we know you've got better things to do and we want to see if we can give you some nuggets before you leave and so you understand. Um, the thing we're going to talk about today is what we've created is really what we call the data ecosystem. In a data ecosystem, we believe the data ecosystem should start with strategy. A lot of companies are, are, are jumping right into data and building the infrastructure because they don't want to miss the boat, but they haven't stopped to think whether or not they should do it. Um, from someone who came from category management, analytics, um, has sold data, data sets, syndicated data, and also understands how to use it as you're sitting in front of a category manager at Walgreens and you're, and you're bringing these insights to them to sell promotions. Believe me, if you don't understand it from the very beginning and you just get involved in the process, you're going to spend lots of money on resources, on software, on people and you'll just find that it'll clutter your organization. So um, from all levels of the organization, I think it's really important to understand what is the strategy of your, of your data. Um, give you a good example. I could spend lots and lots of money trying to tell you how to use a screwdriver and how to, you know, what kind of data is on a screwdriver, how many different categories of screwdrivers there are, how do you segment those categories into soft handle, long handle, sharp, short, um, could look at various, you know, one week, four week, 12 week, 13 week, 26, 52 week trends. You could look at many different measures, dollar sales, volume sales, total hardware sales, how's the category doing? You could look at all those types of things. You could look at geographies, you could look at US, you could look at Atlanta, LA, you could look at all the 52 markets. You could look at all this information on screwdrivers and get a very, and hire a number of people to do nothing but study screwdrivers. But once all that information comes to the end, you may have found out, and knew this before, but forgot about it in the process, that you don't really want to focus on screwdrivers because screwdrivers are being made offshore. You're competing in a very competitive market and you're not making any money. You're using it as a loss leader. So now you've built an entire organization and an entire data infrastructure, including servers and everything else, to study screwdrivers. And it probably was not a good spend. Now, is it a learning? Yes. But could you have spent your time, energy, and, and CapEx funds on another category? So the first thing is, what is a strategy? What are you trying to do? What are the areas you think that you want to be in? Because I think you've got to have a good hypothesis as to what area that you want to be in relative to big data and where you're going to develop your resources before you go too far down the road. The, sex, the second piece is acquisition we call data acquisition, and others call it data capture. Now this is difficult. Um, uh, the consumer products industry, it's being captured. Lots of information, lots of data, they're very data rich, from the Procter & Gamble's to the Unilever's to the Bristol Myers, lots and lots of data. But the issue in a lot of categories is how do you get the data? Um, in the utility companies, um, when, you're, when, when gas is being generated or electricity is being generated or a, uh, an airplane is flying 
and, you're ca and you have turbines that are moving at a certain number of revolu res revolutions per minute, how do you capture all that data? How do you get it? If you have sensors on an airplane, and I've heard there's thousands of different sensors, and they're all transmitting data, which is truly big data, how do you get all that information? How do you acquire it? How do you capture it? Because if you don't have it, you can't do anything with it. The third piece is management. And what we include in management is storage. Management, storage, just overall, how do, you, how do you deal with all this data coming in from different places? You need a place to store it. You need many different servers. You need redundancy. You need to be able to manage that data. And also, under management are people. You've got to have people who are going to manage the storage. And uh, you have to set up a whole structure of how is, how is that going to work. The next is um, the organization. How are you going to organize the data? If you weren't a very data-rich organization, meaning you, weren't, you didn't have people hired to do this kind of work, that is a very, very big piece of it. How are you going to break down that? What is the category of data that you're going to be working within? How does that category break into different segments? How do those segments break into various types? You have to build your data hierarchy. And in most data um, sets, they're very, very well-developed industries, and people look at the data in a pretty standard way. So it would be pretty easy to get to that, I think, in most industries. But it is important to know, because you have to make a decision how organized do you want it? If you get down to paralysis analysis, and you want to go down to the SKU level on everything, or you want to go five or six segments down, you're going to spend a heck of a lot of time and money trying to build that infrastructure, or to hire consultants to be able to get that organized. So it's really important to understand how you organize. Um, the next is insights. And when we talk about insights, once you've built that data ecosystem, it's really, how are you going to look at that? Um, I, there's, no, there's no silver bullet. I wish there was, and we wish there was. We've seen many, many different organizations. They've created this incredible infrastructure, but at the end of the day, what they have to do is they have to have very smart people who have some marketing sense in some cases, who have some technology sense in some cases, who have some financial sense in some cases, to be able to look at it with a critical eye. And those insights, they're going to get those insights, but you have to have the right people to get them. Um, if anyone tells you that a software platform is going to develop all those insights for you automatically, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, you will find a way to, to drill down far enough to make it a little easier to get to them. But creative people are going to be your biggest, and this is really one of our big advantages, creative people are what are going to make the um, make the organization, and they're going to drive your insights. And then lastly, as I spoke about in the last uh, webcast, our last component in the data ecosystem are solutions. How are you going to get to solutions? If you do have parameters that you look at, you organize your data, you've managed it properly, you've acquired all this data, how are you going to come to this. What has to happen? What has to happen so that you have a new insight which changes your business and that you now introduce a new product? So basically we're going to have to, uh, uh, you basically have to look at that whole component, look at all those components and then determine you know, what makes sense on uh, how you're going to develop solutions given a very complex data ecosystem.